Hello and welcome to Interplum, a leading training provider for plumbing, heating, gas and renewable energies. My name is Peter Mace, a senior lecturer at Interplum. The Interplum team have put together a series of lessons which may assist you with tasks that you wish to perform. At the end of this lesson, please click the link below to find details of our Facebook and website pages and a list of further free lessons that might be of assistance to you. Thank you for joining us. In this session we're going to look at compression fittings as a means to join in our copper pipe together. Now the advantage of compression fittings is we don't need any heat to make the joints. So if we're in a area where we might cause some heat damage, perhaps along skirting boards and we can't get a heat mat behind it, then we might not want to put a flame in that situation. A compression fitting might be a better alternative. Likewise, if we've isolated the water supply and drained the system down, but it's not impossible to remove every bit of the water, if we're soldering, that water might get pulled to our joint and that water will stop the solder from running. Therefore, once again, a compression fitting might be an option. Also, if we have a component, which at a later date we might want to disconnect and remove for replacement or repair, then by using a compression fitting, we have a nut that we can undo, remove that component and then replace it. The disadvantage of compression fittings is, first of all, as you can see, they are quite bulky. Secondly, they're not the cheapest of fittings that you can have, so to do a whole plumbing system with compression fittings would greatly increase the cost of the job. So, how does a compression fitting work? A compression fitting consists of three components. You have the fitting itself. This is a compression straight coupling for joining one piece of copper to another piece of copper. We have a compression ring or olive now these can either be made of copper, as this one is, or brass, as this one is. Either are okay. And we have the compression nut. The way it works is the compression ring with the pipe inside sits in that recess and when we tighten the nut on, we squeeze or we compress the olive actually onto the copper pipe to make our sound joint. To make our compression joint, we place the nut onto the copper pipe, followed by the compression olive, and then the next thing to go on would be our fitting. Now at this point, some people have a preference to apply a couple of turns of PTFE tape. To be honest, if you have a brand new fitting on a decent piece of pipe and a brand new olive, you shouldn't need to do this, but as I say, some people prefer to do it, if you like, as belt and braces. Once the fitting is then placed onto the pipe, we can then tighten the compression nut onto the fitting. Now, it's important that we don't over tighten this nut onto that fitting because if we do, as we tighten it, that olive or the compression ring in there is becoming compressed and it's compressing onto the pipe. And if we over tighten the nut, we will over compress the olive onto the pipe and there is a possibility that we could damage the pipe. If we damage the pipe or that olive, there is a chance that that joint will leak. And the only way to repair that is to um, take it all apart and sort of start again. So as a golden rule, we need to tighten that compression joint up finger tight. And then with a couple of adjustable spanners, one to hold the fitting and one to turn the nut. We then need to nip that fitting up. And we look, we're talking of sort of a quarter of a turn. 
that joint should now be watertight and if when we turn the water on it isn't watertight and it drips very slightly it will be because we just haven't tightened it up too much as opposed to it leaking because we've over tightened it and actually damaged the pipe. So to conclude when we tighten up the fitting we need to hold against ourselves when we're tightening the nut as, as a guide we tighten it finger tight plus a quarter of a turn and if when we reinstate the water supply we get a small drip it won't be a lot it might be a very small drip coming from there we would need to go back on with our adjustable spanner and just nip that up slightly more until we know for a fact that there is no leak there well I hope that's been of use for you and hope that you will click the link below to see some more free lessons from Interflow.